Yeah. Make some noise if you're ready to break some chains on this last day of 2017. Yeah. Well, listen, today, if you didn't notice, is a family service. So there is some kids in here today, parents. Um, kids Church will be back open next week. We gave all the Kids Church workers uh, a day off. Um, this week between Christmas and New Year. So give it up for all of our kids' church workers, our kids' men. They're awesome. They do a great job every single week. So they'll be back in full effect next week as we kick off our new series for 2018. But today, as we talk about breaking chains of the past, uh, we got a brother that's coming up. That That's definitely his story, as you're going to hear. And so if you think about what a church should be about, the main thing a church should be about is producing what? Disciples. We're supposed to make disciples. It's not just about making nice music or, you know, having a nice building or, you know, it's about making disciples of Jesus Christ, seeing lives that chains are broken, people are transformed, they're changed by the power of Jesus Christ. And so this brother that's coming up, um, that's his story. He's going to share some of it, so I'm not going to steal all of his thunder, but it's been awesome to watch what God has done in his life these last couple of years. And I first met him, it was over four years ago, he came walking in the church, and uh, he was kind of real elusive at first. I'd see him sitting in the crowd when I was up here preaching, and then afterwards I wouldn't see him. I'm like, what happened to that guy with the gold grill? He like stood out, he was shining when I was preaching. I was like, you know, finally I ran into him, I caught him. He was kind of being shy, and we, we talked, and um, I, I began to just build a relationship with him, and I saw that, man, God had something special in this guy's life. And he was kind of up and down and in and out and still going through his struggles with addiction. Um, but a little over two years ago, God began to just really break some chains in a major way. And um, you're going to hear some of that story today. He ended up getting married, ended up going to Bible college here at the church. He's going to share uh, some crazy stuff that's happened with that. He ended up um, going to some classes and getting trained to start a recovery program here, which we launched this past summer called Friday Night Live. It's every Friday night, celebrate recovery. Yeah. And now he used to be a drug dealer and a drug addict from this neighborhood, and God's broken those chains, and now he's helping other people break those chains. Friday nights, people that struggle with addictions, they need recovery. And it's not about 12 steps, it's not about willpower, it's about the power of Jesus that breaks those chains. And so he's going to come out and share some of his story today and give us some, some nuggets from the scripture on how we can break some of those chains of the past. He's still breaking some chains from the past, and we're all still breaking some chains, right? So we're going to break them together today. So crossover family, let's give it up from one of our own, Benny Fernandez the third, Big B, yeah. Look at him, he's looking good today, he got a suit on. What's up, Crossover? Uh, if y'all don't know, I'm Benny Fernandez III, AKA the Hope Pusher. Went from the Dope Pusher to the Hope Pusher. It's all right. But uh, check this out, yesterday, I was taught by someone that's mentoring me and preaching to before you preach, you need to stay home, you know, chill out with the Facebook, you know, just cut yourself away from society because, you know, you're about to bring a word. And, um, man, truthfully, I don't even want to be up here right now because some, I, somehow the devil snuck through there anyways. So yesterday I got a call, it was about 8 o'clock or something, that a guy that, that we've been pouring into that's been coming to this church, that's been coming to Friday Night Live, he, he relapsed, leaving here Friday night from the recovery thing. And, uh, man, that, that kind of hit me hard last night. And I couldn't sleep that good, and I was tossing and turning. I was fighting with the devil in my sleep. And uh, so I really don't want to be up here, right? So uh, we're going to play Holy Spirit, and, and I'm just going to ask the Holy Spirit to come so it can speak through me to y'all. <laughs> So Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is 
for the opportunity to be in your house, Father God. We thank you for being able to come worship you and not get our head cut off after we get done worshiping you, Father God. We ask you to be with our family. I ask you to be with my brother, that, that bet black slide yesterday that, that messed up, Lord. I just ask you to be with him and comfort him as he's in a bad state right now, a bad frame of mind, Father God. Lord, we ask you to be with people and let them break chains of the past today, Father God. We thank you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right. So when, when I found out I was preaching and, and all that, I started to prepare a sermon. And uh, I said, well, I'm going to call it breaking the chains of the past. Because growing up, when I was a young kid, about, you know, six, seven, my mom a Christian woman that struggled with, with things in the past, chains of the past. Uh, big time Christian woman, but she struggled with uh, pharmaceutical drugs and stuff to get her off depression and all this stuff, you know, stuff that, that Jesus takes control over and handles, but they had a hold over. And she always told me, she goes, son, you gotta break these chains. And I was like, what was this woman talking about? She's crazy, breaking chains. She's like, chains, our family has generational curses that, that are chains, but you got to break the chain. So I was like, yeah, yeah, whatever. And she always told me this. So growing up, you know, I grew up pretty decent. You know, we had some drama or whatever, like every other family does. And, uh, but my, both of my family came from broken homes. And uh, my dad's side of the family, we were all fighters and, you know, Fixed cars, we always had the fancy cars, and drugs was a big part always because everybody used drugs to medicate their feelings. And uh, so that happened for generations. My grandfather's grandfather, you know what I mean? It was like a generational curse for the Fernandez family. And growing up, I seen this lifestyle. Uh, you know, my mom's side of the family, they were like broke, right? Had a bunch of kids, they broke, they smoked cigarettes in the house. I didn't want to go over there, I complained. And then I go see my dad, and he drove a brand new Corvette every year. You know what I mean? He was famous for the fighting, and, and I liked that. And I seen that he was in the street and people respected him. And I wanted to be that. So I wanted to be a gangster, I wanted to be Scarface. Th this was my thing. So I grew up, I started you know, doing my thing, I started reaching that goal. and. Uh, I remember my mom coming to me one night, and she was like, oh, God told me you're going to be a pastor. And I was like, yeah, right. You know what I mean? I'm over here moving kilos. You're going to tell me I'm going to be a pastor. It, it, just, it just don't mix. <laughs> so eventually uh, things got more out of hand. And one year, uh, the feds, the DEA came and, uh, you know, indicted my dad. And we had a big thing going on. And uh, he went to jail on July 21st. 03. And uh, that year after my dad went to jail, I was like, I was lost, you know what I mean? Because my dad, I was a daddy's boy. I never worked. You know, we got a body shop and he would tell everybody in there, my son don't work. He's playing football. You know what I mean? He don't work. He's a Fernandez. So I never knew no trade. You know what I mean? So he just wanted to have, wanted me to have the best, something that he didn't have. But that was really messing me up and creating a monster. So when this happened, he went to jail. I was like off the chain. Okay, so my mom was struggling and, you know, the addiction started picking up more and more doctors uh, prescribed more pharmaceuticals. And, and um, on the year anniversary of my dad, I walked downstairs and my mom was dead, swollen purple. And uh, so I always keep a gun on the top. I grabbed the gun. I was going to blow my brains out, and my mom took the clip out. So at that day, I forsake God. I told God that me and him are done, that I was going to lead people to the dark side. That's what I called it. Okay, so my past to me is something that is always, always on me, okay? 
So today we're going to look at a couple of verses in the Bible on talking about the past. Uh, a lot of them come from Philippians. One that I really like is from um, Philippians, and it's with Paul. You know, me and Paul, I kind of vibe with Paul, okay? He used to be Saul. He used to kill the people. Then now he tries to save the people. It's the same thing me now. I used to try to get the people high. Now I'm trying to save them. So me and him kind of, you know, like vibe, you know what I mean? So we're going to look at the word of God. We're going to go to Philippians first. And uh, in Philippians 3.13, it says, No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it. But I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking for what lies ahead. You see what it says? Forgetting the past. I mean, it's easy for me to tell y'all to forget the past. Every one of us here got some type of past. Unless you're a robot in here, and then you ain't got no past. But the past for me was, was, was something that always had chains on me, okay? So when I started mm, probably coming out of it, I was still messing around, getting high or whatever, but I was trying to fight it. When, when I knew that I had, a, when I wanted to give up this problem, I knew I had a problem, I needed to try to fix it. I did all this stuff, been in and out of rehabs, did it all, tried to kill myself eight times, all this stuff. So I had a vision. A vision is, 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 is bigger than a goal. A goal is something, you know, hey, I want to lose weight. Hey, I want to do this. But a vision to me is something that's supernatural. I mean, it's something that can't happen unless God is in this vision with you. Okay? So this vision pops up in my head, and then my mom's voice comes. It's like, you're going to be a pastor. I'm like, yeah, right. So... I seen this vision that I wanted to, still being stuck in chains of addiction, you know, that I want to get out of this and I want to help people with this. I don't want my mom to die in vain. I want to help people get out of this. So that was my vision. I had this vision. I was like, man, this is crazy. I'll never make this. I got to go to school. I got to do this. I can't stay in school. And, and I was like, oh, man, this is crazy. But through God, he makes visions happen. So, so when, when, when I started letting the past go behind, I started trying to work on myself and God. Because first, I, I did everything for my kids, and, or I did it for my family, or I was going to stop doing drugs for this, or I was going to change my life. But listen, if you can't do it for yourself, you can't help them. You're lying if you're going to say you're going to do it for them because the first time something goes wrong and you go mess up, well, you, you didn't care about them. You got to do it for yourself first, okay? So I decided to do it, and I had my vision. So let's go to the slide on, for the notes. We must have a forward vision. So when I had this vision, I didn't do this to my vision. Look at it this way. I didn't look back. I looked this way. I stepped back, and I, and I seen it there. I didn't go back and look backwards to try to look at my vision. You know what I mean? I had a forward vision. I looked at it forward, and I, and I just stared at it, and I was like, man, that's a crazy vision there, boy. But that's just something you, you got to do. You got to have your vision, but it's gotta, you got to have it out here forward. You got to keep it up there. You got you to gotta really pray on it and really focus on that thing, Okay. Let's go, to the, go back to Philippians. <clears throat> so it says in Philippians 3.14, it says, I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. Man, it's a race. So I look at that verse, I'm like, man, it's a race. Now, that definitely was something I didn't like. Now, when I box, I hate to run. I hated running. So if we had to run, I'd make it short. I'm the kind of person that never wanted to go nothing for a long distance. I was in it. Let's go in it. Let's make this fast money and get out of there. I was never about something to make it long distance, to put endurance, to put time in. I just wanted a short boom, 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 get out of there. You understand? But this race that we're on for the heavenly prize, it's not a short race. It's not a short race. It's a marathon. It's a marathon. Let's look at that note, what I put here. It says, we are running a marathon, not a short race. A marathon? Man, I can't stand a marathon. I'm 300 pounds. I don't want to be running no marathon. 
But this is how it is for life for us. It's a marathon. When I'm out doing my thing and I'm trying to help people, people ask me, what do you do all day? I said, look, 15% of the day I'm helping people. 85% of the day I'm fighting the devil in my mind. And it's every day, every day. I could easily give up. I had a good short run. It was good. You know, hey, I started a ministry. Hey, it's cool, you know. But no, it's a marathon. So if anybody's ever ran far before or, or had to walk far distance, maybe at the fair or something like that, <laughs> and you're walking, right, and you're walking, and, and your foot start hurting, man, you're like, man. My foot hurting. And you're still going, you're still going. Guess what? Your side start hurting. You say, oh, man, my side hurt. And then all of a sudden, your head start hurting. Because I've been thinking about my leg, my foot. Now my head's starting to hurt. <laughs> so w- when I hear that, that kind of throws me to this next verse that I got from Paul about his thorn in the flesh. Since we're on this race that we call life to get to heaven, And we're running and running and running. Always got this thorn in the flesh. It's always something. You know, my wife says, oh, you know, she got this little saying. I forget how she says it. I get mad every time you hear it. Kind of mean like it's something else is going to happen. You know, it's always something. I'm like, no, 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 don't say that. Don't say that. You're going to make the roof leak next. Don't say that. You know what I mean? So right here it says in uh, 2 Corinthians 12, 7, it says, even though. I have received such wonderful revelations from God, which I have. I mean, I can't even tell you. So to keep me from being proud, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from Satan to torment me and keep me from becoming proud. Man, so when I started thinking about that, I was like, man, you know what? If my past didn't keep coming up in my mind, well, I'd be walking around here telling everybody, you saved, and they'd be falling. You saved. My pride would be up so good. But you know what happens? I get in my car. I drive. You know, I'm born and raised here in this town. Every little corner, I did some dirt. Every little corner. So I get in my car. I'm doing good. Yeah, jamming out. And I turn the corner. I said, oh, man, I used to do something there. And then I go up to the next corner. Oh, man, I used to do something there. And, and it bothers me. And I'm like, man, why is this bothering me? Because you know what? Here, Paul talks about the thorn in his flesh. What does it say? From, to, from keeping him being proud. Man, you know what? If I didn't have that, I'd probably be real standing up here like, Shh, my stuff don't stink. <laughs> you know? And um, so what do I do? You know, that, it bothers me, though. Every time I go to these corners or go anywhere, it bothers me, my past. It always comes up. It's like I can never get rid of it. So I'm thinking deeper into it, deeper into it. Like, how can I get rid of this past stuff? And I go to this next verse. Let's see the next verse. Something that I really, really, really struggle with. No, no, we can pass pass that one. Okay, right there. This is the one that I really, really, really struggle with. And you know what? This is one that's keeping me really, really down. It says in Matthew 6, 15, it says, But if you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. Listen, I had a lot, a lot of resentments on people. A lot. Stuff that I did not forgive that I blamed, and I always use that as an excuse to go screw up. But you know what? It was really me, but I blamed someone else. Because you know what? I came from a family that held resentment always, okay? My dad didn't talk to his mom for 10 years, and he argued with his brother, and so I seen this growing up. That's not a way to live. If you do not forgive, you will not be forgiven. If you do not forgive, you will not be forgiven. I always heard this saying growing up, forgive, but don't forget. You know, a lot of people tell you, what do you mean forgive, but don't forget? How can you do that? 
If anybody knows how to do that, you let me know so you can meet me outside and tell me how to do it so I can, you know, try to try it out. Because to forgive someone but not forget, man, you, you still got that thing inside burning. So every little thing that goes wrong, you want to blame it on that person. That's what I did for my whole life. My past, my chains that I had were stuck on me because I didn't want to forgive someone. People. I probably had a list of people, a big list. This person hit me when the bell rung when I was boxing. You know what I mean? This person did this. It's just something that we don't even know how much it has a hold of us. Forgiving someone else. It has a chain on you that you think that you broke. And then the first time something goes wrong, the devil, the master of the past, you know, he's the master of the past, boy. He knows the past better than we do. Throws that in your mind. Hey, 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 you remember that? And I say, get out of my ear. He says, I'm on the other side now. I say, oh, man. Okay, tell me, tell me. You remember when that person did that? Instantly, you're jacked up. Maybe my homeboy that was walking back, his past caught him. The one that was walking back Friday night, his past caught up on him. Something that the devil knew that his flesh liked, it came back and got him. And man, this guy was doing so good, I was so proud of him. That day I told him, hey man, look how big you're getting, bro, I'm so proud of you. He looked at me and said, oh, thanks, B. And then, and then, you know, the past came and got him. That, that just broke me yesterday, you know, and people say, hey, in ministry, it, it happens. I know it happens, but man, when I talk and put, pour into people, I give it all I got. All I got. So when you're walking this battle, I'm walking in with you. When you're going through it, I'm going through it. So this thing of forgiving others before you, is deep for me. Because that's something, truthfully, that I still, I say I forgave, but then how two days later I get mad about it. Oh, man, all oh, this. I go back to it. So it's something that a chain that I'm trying to break, but it still has a stronghold on me. It still does till today. So this year that we really, really need to focus on forgiving all that stuff, all that drama, all that baggage. Get that hot piece of coal that's stuck in there out. Because you know what? Let's look at the notes, what I put on for the notes for that. We must forgive others so that we can grow spiritually. Man, when I started just forgiving the, the, the smallest things, I started growing more and more and more. And it was like, whoa. And then for a while, I was saying, well, why am I not growing? Because I ain't forgive nobody. I want to blame everybody. I was quick to be like, yeah, they did it. But, you know, I had that street code where we didn't tell nobody nothing, you know. But among our, our circle, I'd be like, yeah, you hurt me. You know, you got to forgive. So this year, if you don't take anything to get rid of this past, to break that chain, forgive. Forgive. Man, it says right here, God ain't going to forgive you unless you forgive them. It's a big thing there. Let's go to the next uh, scripture I got here. So in Isaiah in 43, 18 through 19 says, but forget all that. Forget all that past. Forget it. It is nothing compared to what I'm about, um, what I am going to do. What? It is nothing compared to what I am going to do. For I am about to do something new. Man, a lot of us need some new. A lot. Hey, we're going into a new year, but we need to shed some of that old out of here. The one that got your car all sounding. You need to go get rid of that thing. See, I've already begun. Do you, do you, do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. I mean, come on, man. Listen, if he got me up here preaching to y'all, and if y'all only knew this much of what I done, you'd be like, man, that, that guy we serve, he's strong, boy. Real strong. 
if y'all knew this much. <clears throat> Listen, so let's go to the notes what I put. Check it out. The Lord has already started changing your past. Guess what? If you're here right now. If you're here right now, he's already working inside of you. Trust me. It might just be like my grandfather told me. In Spanish, we call him abuelo. He always told me, mijo, with me, son. A drop in the bucket every day, one day is going to be full. Because, you know, me, I'm that short distance runner. I don't want to look way over here. Oh, he told me, don't worry. Every day, try to change something. One of them bad thoughts, change one. You know, he's got this old gangster Cuban talk. And I'm like, yeah, okay, well, okay. But you know what? If you're here right now, you put a drop in that bucket. You put a drop in that bucket. We got to stop worrying about the past. Listen, the past haunts me every day, all day. You know what? But some people say, oh, well... I got this, I've been arrested, I've been that, I've been this, I've been that. And they, they already beat, they're giving an excuse. You know what, they're giving an excuse that they can't do nothing. Let's see that next slide. Boom. Guess what, I've been arrested. But look at this right here. This is me getting Dean's List. Dean's List. Listen, this year we got to stop making excuses. Put God first and watch what he's going to do in our lives. I promise you that. Look, I'm up here living proof. I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be here. Through grace, I got here. But check this out. Grace doesn't work if you don't put no effort. Hey, I hear all the time, grace, 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 grace. Cool. But grace doesn't work if you don't put no work in it. So, you know, I heard that in class one day, and I had, oh, well, professor, I thought we don't have to, you know, works by effort and all this stuff. He said, listen, son, salvation comes to you not through work. But grace takes effort. It takes for you to start working first. Okay? Look at that. And that was like, man, that was a good day. Now, this over here, I can't even explain to you. This, that's my cheering crew in the back. My Friday Night Live team. They, they get it down with me every Friday night. You know what? So I just want y'all to know that, that I am living proof. And whatever you're going through or whatever's in your past, you put God first. He's going to put you, he's going to give you endurance to run this race. A marathon, I ain't worried about that right now. Man, I'll jump in this car God gave me. Let's go cross country. <laughs> hey, listen, check this out. We're going to, uh, I'm going to play, play uh, this song, Redeemed, that means a lot to me. Okay, and uh, if you want to come up to the front, get prayed for. This, this is, symbolizes our altar. You know, when you come up to the front, you're just symbolizing you want to give up something, okay? You come up, you give up something. This is like our foot of the cross here. You know, Jesus died on the cross for all our sins. Well, this is leaving it right there. This is saying, look, I'm done with it. I'm done with it. You know, some people, oh, they're all shy. Man, don't be shy no more. Look, I'm up here. I'm up here tattooed and gold teeth out. <laughs> come up here, lead this on. Let's start the new year right. Come up here, get prayed for. Come on, crossover family. If y'all here, look, we already got something going. So let's play the song, please. Look out. 
invite you to stand with us around the auditorium and let's sing that together one time before we pray.
Make that your proclamation today. I'm redeemed. I am redeemed. Say it like you mean it today. We thank you. Those chains are breaking today. I am redeemed. Those habits, God, that are past. I am redeemed. We're forgiving those people. We're letting go of some things. In Jesus' name. Our willpower can't do it. Some program can't do it. But it's only through your blood. It's through your grace. And as we activate that and we walk in it and we live in it, we're redeemed. So we claim that today. In the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, we thank you. Redeemed. Make some noise if you're redeemed in this house today. I want to invite you to just lift your hands in these last few moments of this worship service of 2017 before God in a form of surrender. God, we lift our hands to you today as we close out these last few moments of this last time that we get to worship you together as a church family in this year. God, for so many of us, this year has been challenging. There's been a lot of tough seasons for many of us, a lot of loss. But yet, God, our hands are raised, and we say thank you because you've been there walking by our side. Even if there's moments that didn't feel like it, there's still many things we can point to and say, we know you've been there for us. God, I pray for each person that's here, each person that's watching, worshiping online today, that if there's some things they need to let go of before this year is over, in these next few hours, that they'll leave it at the altar, leave it at the foot of the cross, leave it in your hands. We can't handle it, but you can. You can redeem us, you can set us free, you can deliver us. I know there's some deliverance, there's some freedom that needs to happen in this house. The people that are watching as well. God, help them not to miss this moment as we cross into this new year God, we can be free. We can be redeemed. We can be going to do new things in our life. You make all things new. So we read that scripture today. God, we thank you for what you've done in my brother Benny's life. God, we thank you for his story. Thank you for what you've done, what you're doing, and what you're going to do. Father, we pray for Friday night live. Celebrate recovery and all the men and women that have been touched. Father, I pray if there's people here that they've got to recover from some things, that they'll drop their pride and they'll make it their business to be there this Friday night. Start off 2018, God, and say, man, I'm going to press in. I'm going to be intentional in this new year. God, help them to step out of their comfort zone so they can have everything that you called them to have and to be and to do. God, be with us these last few hours of this year as we get ready to Celebrate it with some friends and some family, God. May we be intentional. May there even be some opportunities for us to share what you're doing on our life. Even before that clock strikes, strikes 12 o'clock tonight. Use us. Use us. Help us to be a light, God. And we look forward to what you're going to do in this new year. We dedicate it to you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Everyone said. Amen. Make some noise for Jesus today, y'all. Give it up for my man, Benny, bringing the word today.